denoting, who is, who is devoting uh, the month of February to the Heart Fund. Uh, he is actually the ambassador of the Heart Fund, which starts its campaign tomorrow, Mr. Bobby Darren. Thank you ever so much, Arlene. I should like to introduce a, uh, well, one of the most distinguished distaff members of the Fourth Estate and a great newspaper woman, too, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. And on my left, a man all our hearts belong to, Bennett Cerf. Well, Bobby Darren, it's very nice to have you with us. Thank you, John. It's a pleasure to be back. And I would like to congratulate the Heart Fund. I can't think of a better ambassador. Thank you, Bobby Darrell. We have some very interesting occupations tonight, panel. We trust that on this very cold winter's night in New York, we might be able to warm your spirits a bit with them. We'll also have a famous mystery guest before the panel a little bit later in the program. And we'll meet our first challenger after this. To meet our first challenger, will you enter and sign in, please? Nell, Nell Duncan, right, ma'am? <laughs> Is this uh, Miss or Mrs. Duncan? Mrs. Mrs. Duncan, and where are you from? Gainesville, Florida. Gainesville, Florida. All right, Mrs. Duncan, may I present the panel? Now, if you'll join me over here, please. We'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. Panel, we can tell you that Mrs. Duncan is salaried and deals in a service. And we'll begin the general questioning with uh, Bennett, sir. Mrs. Duncan, a wavelength comes across to me that you work for a nonprofit making organization. Is that correct? Okay. No, sir. That's wrong wavelength. Wrong wavelength. <laughs> One dot and nine to go. <laughs> Miss Francis. Well, the wavelength says to me you work for a profit making organization. Clever wavelength. Uh, do people come to you for your service? No. That makes it two down and eight to go, Mr. Darren. Well, I gather then you go to them to perform it. <laughs> Good. Yes. Um, is it something that I might avail myself of? Yes. Uh -huh. You could under, you know, this, the necessary set of circumstances, Bobby. This is not to suggest that you might, as we would understand your normal activities do it, but if in a certain set of circumstances you could avail yourself. Of I see. Would I, um, would I enjoy the circumstances that might force me to... Uh, Come and visit uh, Mrs. Duncan. I would say, Mrs. Duncan, that if he wanted your services, he'd enjoy them, wouldn't he? Yes. Yeah. Let's <laughs> see. Um, yes, she goes to people. Um, does, the, does, does the geography, the Gainesville, Florida, you're from, I, I believe, does that have anything to do particularly with this? Uh, no. You mean, would it reveal anything yes. necessarily about the occupation? No. That's no. three down and seven to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, Mrs. Duncan, do you think I would know about this occupation? Being a city type? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, could I avail myself of this service? Under the... Again, under the proper set of circumstances, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, if I uh, ask for your service, would I need it rather than want it? Would it be a necessity rather than a luxury service? Yes. Yeah, I would say that if you had to consider the, the, the use of the service, we would consider that you had a need of it and would want it, yeah. That's very good, I thought. I didn't say anything then. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was very revealing, John. Uh, would you mind repeating that? Um, would you be in motion when you did what you did for me or for anyone? Yes. Mm -hmm, could be. Mm -hmm. Uh, would this be uh, a motion that required a certain amount of skill? Mm, the motion itself require a certain amount of skill? Knowledge or skill. Mm, I wouldn't think that we would classify it, no. Well, then why couldn't I do it myself? <laughs> well, you, if you wanted to, you probably could. A skillful oh. girl. All right, Bennett, that's four down and six to go. Mrs. Duncan, 
When you are performing your service, do you come into physical contact with the person for whom you are doing said service? No. Five down and five to go, Miss Francis. Do you do something to or about the interior of the home? No. Six down and four to go, Mr. Darrell. Uh, you're not physically in engaged. Um, is, it, is there a degree of educational involvement uh, in line with what you do? Formally, formal education? No, not, not formal, uh, but something that someone uh, realizes he now can do himself, uh, although he'd like to have Mrs. Duncan do it again. Oh, that's very good. That's seven down and three to go. <laughs> Mr. Duncan. What you I have no idea. <laughs> Mrs. Duncan, uh, do you talk to your clients? No. You just it, go somewhere. Yeah. They, uh, <laughs> let us agree, Dorothy, that she, you know might pass the amenities of the day, but that the talk is not vital or critical to this service. Eight down and two to go. Now, Mr. Mr. Duncan, let's see. Well, you work for a profit-making organization. You go to people's homes. You don't go, go you to go, the customer. Go to the customer. Mm -hmm. uh, the customer mm -hmm. might not be in his home, in other words. In fact, usually is not. Is that, the, is that right. correct? Is the customer usually in the same kind of place? Yes. That would be usual. Mm -hmm. Do you do anything to the place that you go that improves the condition of the place? No. No, I wouldn't Nothing think so. At all. No. No. Nine down and one to go, Miss Francis. Is there anything of... Uh, Entertaining in what you do? No. No, that's ten down and no more to go. And this was a tough one. You shouldn't <laughs> even feel bad about it. Mrs. Duncan is a guard in an armored car. first question I asked Miss Duncan was she working for a nonprofit making own session because I thought you had something to do with the law. No, I, I said the same that thing. That was close. Yeah. Actually, Mrs. Duncan works with her husband, uh, who owns the Gainesville Armored Car Company. That's right. And, uh, and we never got onto uniform either. Never got onto uniform. Do you wear a uniform? Other than a costume, it is a type of work. What do you outfit. guard down there? Oranges? <laughs> <laughs> do, do you wear a gun, Mrs. Duncan? Do you carry a gun? Yes. Oh, 38. I, I, had, I had immediate thoughts, and I got a pass them now. That's not good. <laughs> Well, thank you very much, Mr. Duncan. It's nice to puzzle the thank panel you. again. Nice to have you here. All right. <clears throat> now to meet our second contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? Dorothy Chase. Right, ma'am? All righty. Is this uh, Miss or Mrs. Chase? Mrs. Chase. Mrs. Chase, and where are you from, ma'am? I'm from Amaranek, New York. Amaranek, New York. It's almost a neighbor of ours, then. You uh, probably know a good many of the panel. May I present the panel, Mrs. Chase? You Will you join me over here now, Mrs. Chase, and we'll let the audience at home the audience in the theater know exactly what your line is. All right. <coughs> Pardon. Uh, I'm doing the coughing and Bennett's doing the obligato. All right, panel, we can tell you that Mrs. Chase is self-employed and deals in a product. And we will begin with uh, Eileen Frederick. Mrs. Chase, is it a product that anyone on the panel might use? Oh, yes. Is it a product that uh, is ever seen on the person? <laughs> well, we hope not. One down, nine to go, Mr. Duff. Is it a product that is used uh, seasonally, particularly? No. Two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. Could I hold it in my hand? <laughs> you could. Mm -hmm. I could. Uh, would you say it was unlikely that this would be on display in my drawing room? <laughs> yes. Yeah. So if I had one or more of these, uh, they would be kept out of sight? No. No? Yeah. Uh, well, now I'd, I'd like, to, with Mrs. Chase's permission, I'd like to be fair. 
Uh, if you mean by kept out of sight, i.e. not on display continuously or over long in periods of time. In rooms where guests come, yes. Well, I think we would agree to that. On I mean, the shelf. It wouldn't shelf. necessarily be used, put up as decoration of any kind, would we? No, it wouldn't be used no. as decoration. Right. So you go ahead. Uh, is this item packaged? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Is it packaged in a box or a jar? Is it packaged in a box or a jar? Yes. That's two questions. No, it's not. <laughs> Either one. Oh. And if... I, 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 yes. Uh, is it packaged in a box? No. That's one question. That's straight on and seven to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Chase, it being packaged in a jar, may I assume that it is consumable? Yes. Is it uh, eaten? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, is it a condiment of some kind, like pickles? No. Herring, something like that? Yes. <laughs> ben and I, what we're going to do is throw all the cards Pickled over. Pickled herring? Pickled herring is right. <laughs> now, actually, that is probably my fault, Mrs. Chase. Because no, it isn't, John. Uh, Bennett said as she walked in, Pickled herring. Yeah, I don't know what. Did, the, really? He got a flash from But somewhere. now you had, because now this we probably have a fight about I this someday. I obviously didn't, but uh, he did. Yeah. And, and I don't want to have a fight about it. Now, here no. was, here's an issue. We were talking about pickled herring. You said, is it pickled? Now, should I answer yes or no? Well, if it's There's pickled herring, pickle it's pickled, isn't it? It, it isn't pickles, a pickle. But it isn't no, pickled. It is not no, a pickle. It is not a pickle. So if I should say no, if you say no. I said pickled. No. There was a D on the Oh, end you of did, did you? Oh, There's uh, a bad cold you got the there, D. sir. Uh, That's all I got to say. <laughs> right, well, Mrs. Pickle. Chase is the founder of the Betty Lee Products, oh. Incorporated, and uh, started in her own kitchen, right? Yeah. And then moved her down into the laundry room at home. That's right. And now is the owner of her own company. Congratulations. That's a wonderful thing. <laughs> I have to story. tell Mrs. Chase, <laughs> the only lady I ever really knew in Mamaronek, pickled herring on the side. <laughs> That's when you said Mamaronek, I thought of herring. I'm a little hard of herring. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> well, then it says he's a little hard of hearing. I'm not so sure he isn't pickled. <laughs> And we'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment, but first, here is a word from our sponsor with a special feature of the program, the appearance of our mystery uh, contestant for which moment in time the panel is always blindfolded. Are the blindfolds all in place, panel? Yes, yes John. Sir. Yes. Good. Will you enter Mystery Challenger and sign in, please? One question at a time now, in turn, moving clockwise. And we will begin with uh, Dorothy Kilgallen. Well, that was some ovation. Now, let's mm -hmm. see, President Johnson's in bed. <laughs> uh, are you in show business? Yes. Mr. Sir. I, are you accustomed to making people laugh? considered a nightclub performer as much as anything else? <laughs> no capisce, <laughs> admit it, please. I would say that if this is an, a basic or major area of operation, yes. Yes. 
Mr. Darren. Are you currently breaking up uh, Broadway in a vehicle? I'm a natural American. <laughs> 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 no, not Broadway in a vehicle. That would no? no, we would agree it's not Broadway. That's one down a night to go, Miss Kilgallen. Well, no are you <laughs> are you an adorable gentleman who is noted for one particular feature? <laughs> yes. <laughs> We can all say it together, can't we? You can yeah. all say it together. Jimmy Durante. Jimmy Durante is right. <laughs> Bobby, uh, you, well, probably, you probably had it in mind, but the Copacabana is not on Broadway. Jimmy. Nobody drives. I said vehicle. Oh, uh, oh my. And but then no. capiche. Oh, you know, oh. you know something, Bobby? What's that? I've never made a dime on this show. <laughs> <laughs> never went out without a dime. <laughs> Bobby made it for you now. Oh, we're gonna throw all the cards over. I got instructions there. Now you have, so that you can never say that again. <laughs> I know one thing though, uh, Jim. Of course, opening at the Copacabana this week, there was uh, the usual good information about Jimmy Durante, and I remember one fact stated in my mind, it's either this Tuesday or Wednesday, or a week from Tuesday or Wednesday, and you're going to be a young 72 years old, is that right? Yes. yes. What a wonderful, what a wonderful 72. It's, a, it's wonderful, believe me. And I thank God that he's given me my health, and little family, little Cece is my little girl is watching the show, and Mrs. Durani, and every time I'm on the show, she goes over and kisses the screen. Uh, <laughs> how old is Cece now? Three years old. Three years old, isn't that yeah. great? Oh, wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> That's just great. They change your life. They that do one. that. Oh, yeah. They do that. You, is that why you look younger every year? Yep. I every tell day. you something. It's, uh, I hate to go on the road anymore. Yeah. And I'm very happy that they're uh, with me. We're going down to San Juan and down to Miami. And with the help of God, they're going home. And then I'll only have uh, two more weeks. So when I'm on the road without them, it, uh, I can't, the days can't pass fast enough for me to get home now. And I used to love the road. Well, Cece is a very yucky, lucky young lady to have such a father, if we may say so. Sir. And vice versa. And a happy <laughs> birthday from all of us. Happy birthday from all of us, and may you have another Thanks. umpteen. <laughs> Actually, what we ought to do at this point is congratulate all of us for having Jimmy Durante with us. John, he's one of the nicest, one of the nicest people in show business. One of the true. nicest people of any business. Right. And we'll have another contestant after this word. <laughs> Challenger, will you enter and sign in, please? Lakewood, New Jersey. <laughs> nice, nice to have you with us. Don't worry about this. No, no problem. So the theater hasn't collapsed in years. <laughs> Mr. Guilfoyle, may I present the panel? Now, will you join me over here and we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. We are a wee bit short of time, so I will tell you quickly that Mr. Guilfoyle is salaried, deals in a service, and we'll begin things with uh, Bobby Darren. Uh, Mr. Guilfoyle, would I um, 
come to you for a, this particular service that you deal in? Yes, you would. Uh -huh. um, is it something that, um, that falls into the category of something I, sh I need? You no. need? No. That's one down and nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. Mr. Guilfoyle, I'm sure I would enjoy coming to you, but would it uh, ever be necessary for me? Or, no, it wouldn't uh, be necessary. It no. wouldn't pleasurable? Be it wouldn't be necessary. It would be a pleasure. It would be a pleasure, but the answer had been given unnecessary, Dorothy, so oh, I, I think we have to so give you sorry, John. a run over. Two down at eight to go, Mr. Sir. Guilfoyle, do you do anything that could vaguely be called entertainment business? No, he he does not. No, we, no. We, what he does could not be considered entertainment business. Three down and seven to go, Miss Francis. Do you wear something other than an ordinary business suit in your job? Yes. Would, would it be any help to us if we saw you in whatever you wear? Would we have any idea of what you do? Yes, you would. Uh, so that it's uh, something of a costume, is it, what you wear? Yes. Uh, do you wear it indoors? Oh, he wears it outdoors. Why did I ask that that way? No, he, does, he doesn't wear it indoors. He wears it indoors when he gets into it, is when what I meant. When he gets into it, yes, that's fine. That's four down and six to go, too, Mr. Darren. Does, does what you do um, uh, usually result in some uh, uh, pleasurable experience for the individual who comes to you? Yes. Uh-huh. Uh, is there any degree of survival involved in, in, having, <laughs> in having this particular uh, service? Well, I would say this, that only to the degree that, uh, you know, there is danger is inherent in crossing the street, etc. If uh, you have the service which is available to you from Mr. Guilfoyle, it certainly could affect the survivability factor as it might uh, subsequently be applied to any actions which you might indulge in as a result of the service. Yes, but what I was asking was... <laughs> Now, actually, buddy, we're running out of time. Oh. You want to take a Anything shot? Anything to do with airlines? No, no but you... Anything to do with ice skating? No, but Dorothy was getting close. He Fine. teaches parachute jumping. Oh. And the thing we're afraid of, actually, is employed by the Lakewood, New Jersey Sporting... Sport parachuting. Sports center. parachuting center. We thought, you know, somebody might say Lakewood, that... Old Air, Air Force thing out that's there, but you didn't do it. That's supposed to be a pleasure parachuting. Oh, oh it's we a big teach sport jumping. Yeah. You know, folks do it on Sundays for fun. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> and we gave them, a, we, we gave them a bit of a tussle too. <laughs> Thanks. Nice to have you with us. And what's my line? <laughs> Recommend this uh, parachute jumping to Bennett. And good night, Arlene Francis. And good night, and uh, Martin Gable will bring Baker Street to Broadway soon. We miss you. Good night, Bob. Thank you, dear. Arlene. And give as much as you can to the Hart Fund. Good night, Dorothy. I'm sure we all will, and think of you too, Bobby. Come again. Good, good, good night, Bennett. John, I'll treat you to a parachute ride. All right. Good night. <laughs> I'll give you one too, and I'll hold the parachute. And good night, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for being with us on What.